court stood shite. Benson's stunt was meant to contaminate the jury, who had been sequestered in a local hotel and had been banned from reading any news reports on the trial. Then Judge Charles Older began a painstaking examination of each juror. Judge Charles Older called a recess, and Manson's attorney, Irving Kinnerick, motioned for a mistrial. The judge, Judge Holder, didn't really know whether or not it would be a mistrial, and everybody was trying to avoid that. So he decided to question voir dire each of uh, the jury members separately. As Judge Holder questioned the individual jurors to see if they had been prejudiced by the headline, Manson grinned broadly at the court. The smile captured it so beautifully. Charlie was sitting there pulling the strings, manipulating the courtroom and what was happening inside. He was satisfied that day. He had won. Ultimately, Judge Holder decided the trial would proceed. But Charlie Manson was just warming up. As the jury filed into the courtroom, the three female defendants stood up together and in sing-song unison chanted, if the president thinks we're guilty, why go on with the trial? He was running the show. Every time the, the three girls uh, did something all in unison, that was his show. That was him s telling them what to do. What was he trying to do, get a mistrial? I think he was just trying to show the world how much control he had and show the world who he really was. And, you know, he, he let his maniac out, you know. At Benson's command, the family even tried to silence a witness. I got death threats every day for 10 months on four days. Family member Barbara Hoyt lived at Barker Ranch in Death Valley in the fall of 1969. During that period of time before the arrests, Barbara overheard Susan Atkins boasting to another family member about killing Sharon Tate and the LaBiancas. She was very excited. You think she was describing a party. She enjoyed what she did. She really enjoyed it. Susan's confession spurred Barbara to run away from the Death Valley compound. She called police and said she wanted to testify for the prosecution. A short time later, the threats began. They threatened my family, they threatened me, they insinuated that other witnesses had been killed or will be killed. Family member Ruth Morehouse approached Barbara and tried to get her to reconsider testifying. She fed Barbara a hamburger with lettuce, tomatoes, and 10 doses of LSD. And I start getting higher and higher and higher. I wonder, you know, I don't know what's wrong with me. Barbara had never taken LSD before. She became hysterical and ran through the streets. She eventually collapsed and ended up in the hospital. I know I lost consciousness. I remember where I was. There was a place that was gray, like a gray tunnel. And I had no body, I had no identity, I didn't know a name. I think I died, but then I kind of got thumped back into life again. For two weeks after the incident, she debated whether or not to testify. And finally, what it came down to, it came down to where I just could, I had to decide whether or not I wanted to be able to live with myself when I got old. I decided the answer to that was yes, and then I knew what to do. She came back to L.A., and this little girl, who heretofore was reluctant to testify, afraid to testify, she turned out to be an excellent witness for the prosecution. Hamburgers laced with LSD, all of a day's work covering the Manson trial. Then something really bizarre happened. It was Monday, November 25th, 1970. Closing arguments were set to begin. There was just one key element missing. Ronald Hughes the defense attorney for Leslie Van Houten. The trial and everybody involved had just gone through nine months of the most bizarre uh, occurrences. And then all of a sudden, Ronald Hughes doesn't show up and immediately thought, well, the family did it. Charlie manipulated the girls. He told them to go out and kill Ronald Hughes. It was almost the only conclusion you could draw. The trial was in recess for a whole month, hoping to see poor Hughes come through the courtroom door. But after a month, Hughes was still a no-show. Judge Older had a monumental decision. Either declare a mistrial and chuck five months of work, or press on. There was a shadow hanging over the trial that we have to make this work. Or will the American justice system not work? Because of the circus, 
because of the disruptive defendants and all that happened in the courtroom. And yet the judge was determined to make it work. Judge Holder decided to appoint a new lawyer for Leslie Van Houten. No sooner had the court convened than she was on her feet. As soon as he did, Van Houten stood up and howled in protest. Bailiffs moved in to put her in her chair. She struggled and hit a woman deputy, then slapped another, which could be heard at the back of the courtroom. The few minutes were chaotic. Other defendants joined in, and soon all were removed. So it was almost as if a day did not go by, which made it very interesting that something new and crazy would happen. Um, it, it's almost laughable. Just it, it was like a theater. Finally, on January 15th, 1971, the Manson trial went to the jury. After seven months of trial, interrupted by constant disruption, the jury obviously feels no compulsion to rush its verdict. Bill Curtis, CBS News, waiting at the Los Angeles Hall of Justice. We had uh, a bank of telephones on the outside, so you can imagine when the verdict came down, we were all rushing to get through this door. After nine days, the jury rendered its verdict. Guilty, straight down the line. We all rushed for the door, ran for the phone, phone was waiting, direct line. Within seconds, you're connected literally to the nation and you deliver the verdict. The district attorney's office and I personally and the Los Angeles Police Department are very, very pleased with the verdict. That goes without saying. We're all very, very happy. Is this what you expected? Yes, definitely. All the ups and downs and the trials and the struggles and the story and the terrible facts. Uh, it was like uh, America's worst bedtime story and horror story, and now it was uh, over. Two months after the verdict, the decomposed body of defense attorney Ronald Hughes washed up in a creek north of L.A. There were no obvious signs of foul play. The Ventura County coroner determined Hughes had been caught in a flash flood while camping and drowned. 